Production is the creation of goods and services. Operations management is a set of activities that create value in the form of goods and services by transforming inputs into outputs. Essential functions. Marketing generates demand while production and operations creates the product. And lastly, finance and accounting, they track how well the organization is doing, pays bills, and collects the money. The supply chain is a global network of organizations and activities that supply a firm with goods and services. Why study operations management? First, operations management is one of three major functions of any organization. We want to study how people organize themselves for a productive enterprise. Second, we want and need to know how goods and services are produced. Third, we want to understand what operations managers do. And lastly, operations management is such a costly part of an organization. The basic management functions are planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. The 10 strategic decisions are first, design of goods and services, second, managing quality, third, process and capacity design, fourth, location strategy, fifth, layout strategy, six, human resources and job design, seventh, supply chain management, eighth, inventory management, ninth, scheduling, and lastly, maintenance. Productivity is units produced over inputs used, and the multi-factor productivity is output over labor plus material plus energy plus capital plus miscellaneous. The measurement problems are, first, quality may change while the quantity of inputs and outputs remain constant. Second, external elements may cause an increase or decrease in productivity. And third, precise units of measure may be lacking. The productivity variables are labor, which contributes 10% of the annual increase, capital, which contributes about 38% of the annual increase, and management, which contributes about 52% of the annual increase. The new challenges in operations management are as follow. Global focus, supply chain partnering, sustainability, rapid product development, mass customization, just-in-time performance, and empowered employees. Product, service, and design. Design methods and techniques. The traditional process in product development has duties and responsibilities clearly defined, which makes it hard to foster forward thinking, and which usually result in miscommunications between the customers, how the marketing team would interpret the customer needs, how would the engineering department design a product, how would the operations produce it, and how could the finance department actually budget for it. Design concepts, standardization. It is the extent to which there is absence of variety in a product, service, or process. Mass customization. It is producing basically standardized goods, but incorporating some degree of customization. Delayed differentiation. It means producing, but not quite completing, a product or service until customer preferences are known. Modular design. It is a form of standardization in which component parts are grouped into modules that are easily replaced or interchanged. Robust design. It is a design that results in products or services that can function over a broad range of conditions. The product life cycle. The product life cycle has four parts, namely introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. Introduction is when the product is new in the market where it is still incurring a negative cash flow. Fine-tuning may incur expenses like research, product development, process enhancement, and supplier development. Growth is when the product begins to stabilize. In maturity, there are now established competitors. High volume, innovative production, and improved cost control may be needed. And finally, the decline of the product should result in its termination unless it has special contributions to the organization. The degree of newness. It is the modification of an existing product, the expansion of an existing product line or service offering, a clone of a competitor's product or service, and a new product or service. In modification and expansion, the degree of newness 
to the organization and in the market is low. In clone, the degree of newness in the organization is high while still low in the market. And in the new product or service, the degree of newness in both the organization and the market is high. Product Development Process The product development process includes idea generation, feasibility analysis, product specifications, process specifications, prototype development, design review, test market, introduction, and evaluation. Idea Generation it is supply chain based, competitor based, and research based. Design techniques. Concurrent engineering. It is the bringing together of engineering design and manufacturing personnel early in the design phase. Design for manufacturing or DFM. It is the designer's consideration of the organization's manufacturing capabilities when designing a product. Design for operations or DFO. It is like DFM but encompasses services as well as manufacturing. Design for assembly or DFA. It focuses on reducing the number of parts in a product and on assembly methods and sequence. Design for disassembly or DFD. It is a design used so that used products can be easily taken apart. Manufacturability. It is the ease of fabrication and or assembly which is important for cost productivity and quality. Design for recycling or DFR. Design facilities the recovery of materials and components in used products for reuse. Remanufacturing. It means the refurbishing used products by replacing worn out or defective components. Quality function deployment or QFD. It is an approach that integrates the voice of the customer into both the product and service deployment. Aside from the different design techniques mentioned, other issues in product development include cultural differences, ethical issues, and environmental issues. Ethics and environmentally friendly designs. It is possible to enhance productivity by also lowering costs and preserving resources. In making eco-friendly designs, you can make the product recyclable and use recycled materials, less harmful ingredients, lighter components, less energy, and less material. Product documents. First, the engineering drawing. The engineering drawing shows dimensions, tolerances, materials, as well as the codes for group technology. Second, the bill of material. The bill of material lists the components, quantities, and where it is used, as well as the product structure. Third, assembly drawing. The assembly drawing shows a detailed view of the product which includes the relative locations to show how to assemble the product. Fourth, assembly chart. The assembly chart identifies the point of production where components flow into sub-assemblies and ultimately into the final product. Fifth, group technology. The group technology shows the parts grouped into families with similar characteristics as well as a coding system which describes processing and the product's physical characteristics and part families that can be produced in dedicating manufacturing cells. Sixth, the root sheet. The root sheet lists the operations and times required to produce a component. The work order. The work order shows the instructions to produce a given quantity of a particular item to a schedule. The engineering change notice, or ECN. It is a correction or modification to a product's definition or documentation. Service design. Service refers to an act which is done to or for a customer. Service delivery system includes the facilities, processes, and skills needed to provide the service. Product bundle is a combination of goods and services. Service package includes the physical resources needed to perform the service, the accompanying goods, and the explicit and implicit services needed. Service typically includes direct interaction with the customer. Here, there is an increased opportunity for customization. However, there could be a reduction in productivity. Cost and quality are still determined at the service stage, where there could be delay in the customization, modularization, and reduction in customer interaction, often through automation. 
Service systems ranges from those with little or no customer contact to very high degree of customer participation. Well-designed service systems include consistency with the organization's mission, user-friendly, robust if variability is a factor, easy to sustain, cost-effective, value is obvious to customers, effective linkages between back of the house or no contact with customer, and front of the house operations or direct contact. Having single unifying scheme such as convenience and speed and having design features and checks that will ensure service is reliable and high quality. Moments of truth. These are critical moments between the customer and the organization that determine customer satisfaction. Documents for services. Service blueprint. A method used in service design to describe and analyze a proposed service. Scripts and storyboards are other techniques. Service design challenges. 1. Variable requirements. 2. Difficult to describe. 3. High customer contact. And 4. Must take into account service customer encounter. Reliability is the ability of a product, part, or system to perform its intended function under a prescribed set of conditions. In effect, reliability is a probability that a product or system will function when activated and or function for a given length of time. Some terms related to reliability are independent events. These are events whose occurrence or non-occurrence do not influence each other. Redundancy. It is the use of backup components to increase reliability. There are two views when looking at reliability. The first view is that the probability that the product or system will work when activated. The second view is that the probability that the product or system will work for a given period of time. Under the first view, we have three rules to know about. Let's first discuss rule number one. If two or more events, or should I say components, are independent and success is defined as the probability that all events occur, then the probability of success is equal to the product of the probabilities of the events. In other words, all components are needed for success. So the formula for rule number one is Rs is equal to R1 times R2 times R3 and so on and so forth, where Rs is the reliability of the product or system R1 is the reliability of component 1 or event 1, R2 is the reliability of component 2 or event 2, and so on and so forth. So here we have an example of a product or system. The said product or system has three components, R1, R2, and R3, and R1 has a reliability of 90%. R2 has a reliability of 80% and R3 has a reliability of 99%. So in, in order to know the reliability of the whole product or the whole system, we have to multiply the probabilities or should I say the reliability of its three components. So we multiply 90% or, or 0.90 times 80% times 99%. And after multiplying this, we get 0.713 or 71.3%. So in other words, the, the whole product or system in our example has a reliability of 71.3%. Now let's discuss rule 2. If two events or components are independent and success is defined as the probability that at least one of the events will occur, the probability of success is equal to the probability of either 1 plus 1 minus that probability multiplied by the other probability. In other words, in rule number 2, only one component is needed for success and the other component is considered as a backup. So the formula for rule number 2 is RSS is equal to RM plus open bracket, open parenthesis, 1 minus RM, close parenthesis, times RB, close parenthesis, close bracket, where 
RSS is equal to the reliability of the product or system, RM is equal to the reliability of the initial component, 1 minus RM is the probability that the initial component will not work. RB is the reliability of the backup component. So here is an example of how rule 2 is applied. Here we have a product. It has two components. This product only needs one component to, to be able to become a success. So the other component would be considered as a backup component. So the initial component would be RM and the backup component would be RB. The RM has a reliability of 0.90 and RB has a reliability of 0.80. So in order to solve for the reliability of the whole product, we have to use the formula said earlier. The formula would be 0.90 plus 80 times 1 minus 0.90. So the answer would be 0.98. So the reliability of the product in our example is 98%. Now let's talk about rule 3. If two or more events are involved and success is defined as the probability that at least one of them occurs, the pro then the probability of success is 1 minus the probability that all events or components would fail. So in other words, at least only one component is needed while the other components are just backups. So in rule number 3, there are more than one backups as compared to rule number 2 where there was only one backup. So, the formula for rule 3 is RSSS is equal to 1 minus open bracket, open parenthesis, 1 minus R1, close parenthesis, times open parenthesis, 1 minus R2, close parenthesis, times open parenthesis, 1 minus R3, close parenthesis, and so on and so forth. Where, wherein, RSSS is the reliability of the product or system, R1 is the reliability of component 1, R2 is the reliability of component 2, and R3 is the reliability of component 3. Now let's talk about rule 3. If two or more events are involved and success is defined as the probability that at least one of them occurs, the pro then the probability of success is 1 minus the probability that all events or components would fail. So in other words, at least only one component is needed while the other components are just backups. So in rule number 3, there are more than one backups as compared to rule number 2 where there was only one backup. So, the formula for rule 3 is RSSS is equal to 1 minus open bracket, open parenthesis, 1 minus R1, close parenthesis, times open parenthesis, 1 minus R2, close parenthesis, times open parenthesis, 1 minus R3, close parenthesis, and so on and so forth, Where, wherein RSSS is the reliability of the product or system. R1 is the reliability of component 1. R2 is the reliability of component 2. And R3 is the reliability of component 3. Here is an example of a product or system under rule 3. So as we could see, the product has 3 components. And this product only needs one component to succeed in order for it to be a, a success. So here its three components are R1, R2, and R3. R1 has a reliability of 90%, R2 has a reliability of 80%, and R3 has a reliability of 70%. So now let's solve for the reliability of the whole product. So one minus open bracket, open parenthesis, 1 minus 0.90, close parenthesis, times 
open parenthesis 1 minus 0.80 close parenthesis times open parenthesis 1 minus 0.70 close parenthesis close bracket is equal to 0.994 so the the reliability of the product in our example is 99.4 percent now let's talk about the second view of reliability again the second view is the probability that the product or system will work for a given period the second view can also be understood as the percentage of the time that a certain product is available for use given that the said product breaks down from time to time so the formula for the second view or should we say the formula for the availability of a product or system is mtbf over 